Robert Alexander here from the Mind Ensemble, and some of you have seen some videos online and maybe heard about the group, and I just want to show you exactly how it is that we're using our brain waves to generate music and to control musical parameters, and also give you a chance to try out some of this on your own. And so this is what the interface looks like, and I'll just play through some of the sounds here. So any parameter of what you heard right there could be controlled by this brainwave data. And first I just want to make sure that everyone at home could get set up and follow along with this tutorial. So right here is the screenshot that we're looking at now on my server. If we back up one level, we're looking at robertalexandermusic.com forward slash mind synth. And here's a Mac standalone, a Windows standalone, and then here's a bridge to Logic in case you want to send the MIDI data over to Logic and uh, synthesize sound in Logic from brainwave data. Now... YouTube, the Mind Ensemble Smiletronica test, and Mind Ensemble Premiere Performance videos are also good to check out. Um, and here's the Emotive website where uh, you'll actually be able to pick up the hardware and the software. Um, you're going to need to download Mind Your OSCs, which is a, a free applet. Um, and this translates the Emotive data into OSC data, which we're then sending into Max MSP. Um, the SDK Lite Software Development Kit. Um, is free for you to download. You're just going to need to pick up the headset. And just to let you know that currently the software is only available for Windows. So you're going to need to boot up your Mac machine into Windows or just be working on a Windows machine if uh, you want to be interacting with this hardware. So right now I'm just going to gear this tutorial for those at home who don't have the hardware um, and want to actually be able to follow along. So I'm just going to use these test oscillators. But all of this brainwave data has been mapped such that here we're using the open sound control object and OSC route, which are part of the Mind Your OSCs bundle. And then we're just uh, splitting that out into each parameter and sending it to a series of switches, um, which are these columns here. So if I click one engagement here, that sends our engagement data over to this first area. And then if I turn that on, then it turns green. And we know that now we have the, the actual data uh, interacting with our interface here. And so I'm going to use this sinusoidal data for testing purposes. And let's say that we're going to use data three here. So I'm going to turn that on, turn this off. And right now it's not producing any sound because this whole area of the patch is only for handling the incoming data and controlling how it is that we're actually uh, working with that data. So I'm going to generate a sine wave. My frequency input will be data three because remember we're using data three here. I'm going to send that out to audio one. Reverb, panning, and gain is here. So right now we're using this test oscillator. I'm going to slow it down to 0.25. So that's 0.25 cycles per second. And I'm going to switch it so that we're actually mapping this onto a series of pitches. And I'll show you guys the pitch map. Click here to view pitch map. This window comes up. Now you want to make sure that you have data stream on and visualization on because these default to off just to save some CPU power. So here we see this raw data stream. Now when you're using your brainwave data, you're actually going to see the brainwave parameters stream in here. Now we can change our pitches by just clicking on a different note preset. We change our notes here, just type in new values, and you can t say data off, and then change any value here. So change this to 110, and then data back on. And then write that as a new preset by saying shift click over here, and then that is now a new preset that we can activate at any time. Our mapping, we control here. Mapping controls how the data interacts 
with the notes. So as you can guess, this is an ideal map for if your data fluctuates around the middle and you want to map more note values onto the, the middle data range. And we have very few data points around the edge. So something like this has more data points at the bottom and less at the top. So if I'm thinking about a cat and I start to think about a cat more intensely and more intensely and more intensely, it maps across the series of notes and creates a melodic scale. So let's uh, think about some other ways of generating sounds. Triangle wave, sawtooth wave, square wave. Now if I'm not using the pitch map, I can also use a pulse train generator, which creates some interesting sounds. We'll go from zero to 10. another way of generating sound. So now if I take generator 1 and I change it to pink noise, frequency input deactivates. Now I can take this output, rather than sending it to audio 1, send it now to filter 1, and it's going to go silent, because filter 1 isn't sending anywhere. So we want to send filter 1 out audio 1, and now we hear that filtered white noise. Sorry, pink noise. Now again, we want to use our data to control this. So data 3, rather than 0 to 100, we're going to say 0 to 2,000. All right, here's a good place to talk about the envelopes. So rather than sending to audio out 1, I can send to envelope 1 and it's going to go silent here for a second. That's because, for one, there's no gate assigned. Now I'm going to assign sequence one and create a sequence, so this is like your usual step sequencer. For timing, I'm just going to say a constant value for now, and then send out to audio one. So this controls that actual ramp of the gate that we're using. So the higher it gets, the closer we get to the original signal, and the smaller it gets, the more quickly that ramp closes. So now, let's say that I also want to use a data parameter to control this gate here. What I can do, so again, so you can follow at home, I'm using a sine oscillator, sending it to data 4, and we're going to smooth that data a little bit, um, and scale it from, let's say, 5 to 300. Then set our time to data 4. And you can watch the time change as the input data changes. So I can switch to another sine oscillator. So now I'm using a completely separate data point to control that gate. And that gate is actually what was happening in this preset that we saw here. If we look, here we see that the envelope is being driven by data 3. Alright, now to get to some advanced synthesis, we're using these operators. So what happens with these operators is that we're able to multiply, divide, add or subtract for additive synthesis, subtractive synthesis. For multiplying, we can get something like a ring modulation. We can multiply signals by other signals and use our brainwave data to control any of these kind of synthesis properties. So I'm going to switch over to a synth that utilizes this operator here. All right. So this may initially seem kind of complex, but we just say, all right, we're sending this sine wave to operator 1, 2. 1, 2 simply means the right side of that equation. We're sending this filter to operator 1, 1, and that means the left side of that equation. And in that way, we're multiplying one signal by another and getting a ring modulation. All right, if you want to follow us on Facebook, you can check out Mind Ensemble on Facebook, or if you want to know more about data sonification, just check out at sonification on Twitter, and um, you can go ahead and email the Mind Ensemble 
at Gmail, and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer any questions. And again, this interface is available online for you to check out. Um, so just go ahead and give this a download and give it a try. And we'll be releasing some other versions of this with updated functionality um, as we start to hear back from people. Thanks a lot.